Now, sometimes you can have a bad show and end up having a good show. I know that probably makes absolutely no sense, which is ultimately perfect when you think about professional wrestling because in a lot of ways, wrestling makes no sense. But you could have a show with bad pacing and bad flow, bad matches, but have a show with really memorable moments and things that happen that get people buzzing, get people wanting to tune in next week, things happening that could override all of that. And at the end of the day, that's realistically what matters. It's can you hook the fans enough to get them to watch the next week. And make no mistake about it, Dynamite this week, for the most part, for the first hour, was trash. Like, it was really, really bad. The whole tagline of winner is coming or whatever, I thought we were in the middle of a crap blizzard because this was awful. Like that opening battle royal just missed on so many levels. And and I'm, I guess maybe I'm just old. Yes, I'm old. Um, but the whole thought of two guys lasting, but then the payoff comes next week, like... I'm just not really down with that, even though it might, you might say, well, it's MJF and it's Orange Cassidy you're going to face off next week. You know, the, you get to a point where maybe you're doing a little too much with Orange Cassidy. Like, now you're starting to get away from the things that actually made him appeal to me, which is where he was different. He wasn't talking. He wasn't really wrestling that much. He was truly different. Now he's just kind of another wrestler. So we're getting away from that. Like, yeah, it was not a great battle royal. The finish was kind of lame. And then it was what was the theme throughout the course of most of the night? You know, you had people coming out afterwards. Like, you could do too much of this crash TV shit. You absolutely positively can. And it was, the first hour was really bad. Like, Chris Jericho and Frankie Kazarian, uh, somebody pointed out on Twitter, it seemed like Kazarian really had to slow down for Chris Jericho's getting all beat red with a 280 over 150 blood pressure ass. And man, I got to tell you, that's the way it seemed like to me because this match was really bad. Like really, really bad. You could argue the stuff about MJF, you know, displaying the towel and then Sammy Guevara, the savage, the Spanish god, excuse me, excuse me, the Spanish god, you know, about to throw in the towel. Like... The, I'd rather just have the segment than the match. You know, just have Jericho throw down the gauntlet and say, next week, you know, we either get all on board or this inner circle thing is over. And it seems like they're pointing to a Sammy Guevara face turn. But it might be more interesting if they kick Jericho out of the group and give him the face turn. Um, you know, I personally don't care one way or another about Jericho being a face, because I think his theme song is stupid as hell. I hate Judas. Fozzie's freaking stupid. That's just me, though. I know I'm a fuddy-duddy. But I do like the fact that they have created options and possibilities and different things that could happen. That is good. So, again, creating a hook for next week, while the match itself was trash... you at least have a reason to watch next week. Even that beginning Battle Royal. It's MJF and Orange Cassidy wrestling next week. At least the things that are happening here have consequences that are tying into the next show. Um, I'm not really sure about that confrontation of the Young Bucks by the Acclaim. Like, the the dude, the bigger dude, what was his name, Max? Like, we're, we're really going down the if Darren Young could rap angle. Like, you look like John Cena, <laughs> present yourself like John Cena angle. Interesting choice in 2020, I gotta say. So I don't really know what the hell that was supposed to be about. It's like I don't know what the hell it was supposed to be about with Dr. Brick Baker versus this legit Layla Hirsch girl. Um, only thing that was legit about this match was it was legit ass. Like, this Layla Hirsch did not impress me. She was really bad. I'm sorry, it's true. Brick Baker at least has some type of character, seems to have some type of personality. I think I've seen her getting a little bit better in the ring. But this match was pretty bad. It was legit 
ass. At least Thunder Rosa made an appearance afterwards, but again, another common then trend and theme was you had all of this crash TV. And I tweeted, you know, during the first hour of the show that this felt like to me an old episode of Impact Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> How prescient. Like, this felt like TNA. Back in the day, Dixie Carter sees the ratings drop by a tenth of a point, and she's panicking, and she's throwing everything out of the damn show. Like, it's all got to be this week. Everything happens. We're doing everything. No hold hard. No retreat. No surrender. That's what it felt like to me. Then we get to the Cody and Darby versus Team Taz match. And Cody's really starting to get irritating more and more every week. His entrance is over the top for his position on the card. It's really stupid. Like, let's be real. And before you just call me a hater on Cody Rhodes, I think you can find plenty of things over the past year and a half or two that have actually said that have been positive about him. And in some cases, I've actually defended him. Especially against the comparisons to him of a certain Memphis mid-card piece of crap! So, I feel comfortable, perfectly at liberty, to say that that entrance is stupid. It's over the top. Like, what the fuck is he even supposed to be about? Like, even this match, again, like, you got Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks. You know, Team Taz, I should be down with this. And again, it was just kind of, ugh. This is there. And then, of course, you got Darby Allen going over. It's like, you're not getting any heat on Team Taz. And, you know, why did you do the thing with Taz choking out Cody last week? And then he doesn't really feel like it followed up on it very much the following week. It was just weird. But then, as I tweeted about this feeling like impact used to be, the lights go down and you see an image on the screen a video plan, and my God, this legitimately floored me. Sting! The icon Sting! <laughs> Sting is in AEW, confirmed! Sting! 61-year-old, his hair is holding on for dear life, but he hasn't yet resorted to LeBron James hair plugs. Sting! The icon! Neck injury, sting! Like, that was a moment. Like, I don't give a crap if he's 61. I don't give a crap if he ever wrestles or not. Like, even just that one appearance in and of itself got social media buzzing. Certainly, it was going to produce something in terms of the ratings for this week on this show. And also, again, ties into next week. Because Sting is going to speak. And the way he came in there, like he's staring down Cody and he's staring down Darby. It's like Sting is looking for something, and I don't know what it is. But but I, I do want to say this. Sting is back. Whether you want it or not, it's here. And in a rough year like 2020, you know what? I selfishly could use a little nostalgia. I would love to see Joker Sting. <laughs> but I'm not kicked out. But all i got to say is this, as we look ahead, in the weeks and months to come, the weeks and months to come, Mark Calloway, that's right, Undertaker, just because you had a final farewell with one company, you were supposed to be an independent contractor, in no way, shape, or form, means that that needs to be a farewell taker for all wrestling companies. That's all I'm saying. Double or Nothing is May 29th, 2021 at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. You know, Sting says, what's up? It's about five months away. Might be kind of bored sitting at your home in Texas at your ranch and wondering what you got to do with your time. Yo, dog, you freak, Sting's got a gig. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not saying, but I'm saying. Sign on the bottom line, taker. May 29th, 2021, double or nothing.
Give it to us! It's what we want! It's what we need! <laughs> like, after this, man, admittedly, like, this was a massive pickup after the first hour of the show, which largely sucked. Like, seeing Sting was cool. Seeing Sting was a moment. I'll leave to talk about, well, the, we make fun of WWE for bringing out the fossils, and they bring out a petrified fossil and Sting in AEW, and all of a sudden it's cool. Hey, it is what it is, man. Like, let me have a moment, okay? Gonna have a moment, and that's okay. And that's what it absolutely was. And when you think about guys that have had moments in wrestling over the years, and there tends to be a magic around them where they can create moments, there are a few better than Sting. And even hearing Tony Schiavone be able to say, It's Sting! Obviously, I don't do a great Tony Schiavone voice, but you get the excitement, you get the passion, just to be able to hear him and JR make the call on this debut of the icon was fantastic. Just fantastic. So admittedly, I had a little bit of trouble uh, really focusing on the world title match, Moxley defending against Kenny Omega. And, you know, I kept wondering to myself a little bit, why are they making it a point to mention that an Impact Wrestling executive like Don Callis is there? Like, maybe there was a little bit of an underlying suspicion that they got some type of working arrangement or some type of working agreement. But, man, it was still a little bit surprising with what they did. I think a lot of folks were expecting Omega, it seems like, to win this belt tonight. And to be fair, it was time for a change. It was time to shake stuff up. But did we really see this coming? I assumed it wouldn't be clean. There had to be some type of chicanery, some type of shenanigans going on. And boy, were these shenanigans. In a night of Crash TV, in a night of we're going to treat it like a pay-per-view, just throw everything at it on TNT. Holy cow, you got Sting back on TNT for the first time since March 26, 2001. You got Don Callis, an Impact Wrestling executive, helping Kenny Omega to cheat to win the AEW World Championship, and then them exiting stage right and leaving the damn arena. And at the end, when Alex Marvez catches up with them, they said, you're going to find out what Kenny Omega has to say on Tuesday. What do you mean Tuesday? On Impact Wrestling. To which immediately thousands of AEW fans go to Twitter and say, Oh my god, Kenny Omega is AEW World Champion. By the way, how the hell do I watch Impact Wrestling? Now, I will do a separate video, I think, talking about whether or not this working relationship or agreement makes sense. Because I could go on either side of the fence here, admittedly. But if you were going to sell a heel turn for Kenny Omega... You've really sold a heel turn here. You've had him win the title by cheating with the help of the executive from another wrestling promotion. Them leaving together out of the arena at the end of the show. And the next time you're going to hear from the AEW World Champion is going to be on a rival promotions television show on Tuesday. Like, if you want to get a guy over as a heel and really talk about changing of a character... You're doing that right here. And very, very well done. The match itself was okay. I mean, I'm sure others will think it was fantastic compared to what I did. I just thought it was okay. Um, a little long for my taste. But man, the payoff at the end, the payoff was absolutely fantastic in and of itself for what it is. And again, it's got you looking forward to what's coming up next week. And too often in wrestling, we don't really get that vibe. We don't really get that buzz. We don't really get that hook, that cliffhanger that makes us want to tune in to see what's going to happen next week. And when I think about AEW Dynamite this week, I have several reasons to be very, very interested in what's going to go down next week. I don't know if I'm interested enough to watch Impact Wrestling Live, but it could happen. It absolutely could happen. So in terms of the match quality on this show, it sucked. Sorry. When all was said and done, though, was this a show that I really enjoyed? Look at the big smile on my face. March 29th, 2021, Mark. That's all I'm saying.